I first saw Star Trek VI The Undiscovered Country at the Empire Leicester Square in February 1992. It was one of the most impressive and memorable screenings I've ever attended. Now the film has been released on 4K disc, so just how well does it stand up? Keep watching to find out. I suppose you could say I'm a bit of a Trekkie, and this is just some of my collection. I particularly like the original cast movies, and as much as I like Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan and Star Trek IV The Voyage Home, I think Star Trek VI The Undiscovered Country is overall the best of the six films, and I'll aim to outline my reasoning for that throughout this review. The screening of the Empire was a 70mm blow-up struck directly from the original 35mm camera negative. This means the best possible image quality, an aspect ratio of 2.2 to 1, so cropped slightly at the sides, and 6-track magnetic Dolby Stereo sound. It looked and sounded fabulous, and I've been trying to recreate something similar to that experience ever since at home. In fact, I was so impressed with what I saw at the Empire that night, I went back the following week to see it again, but sadly the film had moved from the Empire Leicester Square to the plaza on Lower Regent Street, so I trundled on down there, went to see this film again with great anticipation, and something was wrong. It couldn't have been the same 70mm blow-up print because the image quality was nothing like what I'd seen, and certainly the sound quality was nothing like I'd heard at the Empire, and that's when I really sat up and took notice of THX Cinema Sound. And so this 4K disc is the latest attempt to try and match that quality enjoyed that night at the Empire, but once again it doesn't quite match the heights achieved that evening. In fact I'd say this 4K is not particularly impressive in terms of what we'd usually expect from a 4K release, so I thought I'd better go back and look at the previous home video releases that I have. I've had the VHS widescreen release since 1994, and as you would expect, it's a bit second rate compared to the 4K, and really only gives you an impression of the film. The Blu-ray is good, but colourless compared to the 4K. The new Blu-ray in the 4K pack has a different menu to the old Blu-ray, but the feature may be the same master file. I think all, or almost all, the extras were actually on the previous Blu-ray. There may be one or two minor differences, but nothing much extra to see there, if there is anything at all. My colleague from the British Film Collectors Convention, or rather my boss from that convention, Keith Wilton, and I were offered a 35mm general release print of Star Trek VI from America, and we decided to take a chance and go halves on it. We were told there was a bit of a scratch down the far left-hand side, but we thought we really loved the film, the two of us really loved the film, we'd enjoyed seeing it at the cinema, and we wanted to see if we could get more accurately to what we'd seen in the cinema in 1992. Sadly, that minor scratch turned out to be a third of the way across the picture, and was actually an emulsion scratch, so green and really thick. So there was no chance of us screening a reel or two of Star Trek VI at the British Film Collectors Convention. We never really got over that, and we were much more cautious in what we bought afterwards, but quite a few more prints did come in from America, but sadly we were never offered Star Trek VI again. So one day maybe, but maybe I should stick out for that 70mm blow-up print and get a suitable projector to go with it. Maybe then I'll reproduce exactly what we had in the Empire. However, as it turned out, it was actually quite worthwhile getting that print, because despite the awful scratch, I was able to see what a general release print on 35mm of Star Trek VI really did look like, and unsurprisingly, not as good as a 70mm blow-up, and I'd say really that the 4K does represent the 35mm very well. I think there's quite a bit more grain on the 4K disc than you perceive on the film, but that's just the natural photographic process, I think. And as I keep pointing out, and as was confirmed in the extras on the 4K release of the Steam, scanning a film 
does exacerbate film grain. So that's why there's always image noise reduction applied to every disc we get. And thankfully, most of the time they don't go too far and we don't get that distinctly waxy look that makes everything look so unrealistic. But removing all the film grain to my eyes does give a film on video a slightly more unrealistic look. So it's something I don't particularly like, but we have to accept that digital noise reduction on the image has to be applied to bring these films back to how they did look on 35mm. I think there is another reason for the visible film grain though, and that is the moody muted lighting that pervades throughout because this was shot almost entirely on film sets and it was intentionally dark. And that does result in less clarity, less definition and increased film grain dependent on the film stock. But I think it was a look they went for and they achieved it. It's just, I can't recall the film grain being anywhere near this course on the 70 mil. But I was sat in row D, four rows back, so you'd think if anyone was gonna see film grain that night, it would have been me. So I think I've just gotta get HD Wells time machine, go back, have another check, and then I'll be able to give a more accurate representation of what it truly was like. But there are specific scenes from Star Trek VI that I do remember from that night, and one of which is when Chancellor Gorkon is shot with a phaser and the crew from the Enterprise, Kirk and McCoy, they go on board to see if they can rescue the situation. And there's some digital effects work there, some computer animation and some globules of blood go in front of the camera. And I remember that vividly and how it looked. And I've been trying to recreate that ever since. And I will say that the color on the 4K is as close as anything I've seen since that 70 millimeter screening, with perhaps a possible exception of the 35 mil. But the contrast too, the density, is also very good on this and surpasses the Blu-ray. So if you're sitting on the fence about this and you love the film, then maybe the 4K just might be worth the investment. But you might have noticed that I've not bought the entire set of Star Trek films because I really don't like keep buying the same film over and over again. And I thought I'd see how I'll get on with this one and take it from there. But I might be tempted to have a look at number two and number four. I don't know, haven't made up my mind yet. Of the Blu-ray discs I have in that previous pack, I think it's only Star Trek 2 that really doesn't come up to the standard of the rest of them. And of the six, if I recall correctly, I would say the first film has the best quality. The image aspect ratio is approximately 2.40 to 1, and the sound is Dolby 7.1, but you're going to have to play it really loud if you're going to approach the impact of what we heard at the Empire. And in that regard, that was due to the refit in 1989, which included the installation of a THX certified sound system. And I've heard plenty of cinemas with THX certified sound since then, but none that have come up to the standard of what I used to enjoy at the Empire. Not everyone will agree with me on that because it is a huge auditorium. There were a lot of speakers and there was a lot of space for echo, but I loved the way that sounded. It really did give me the impression of space and the films really did surround. And Star Trek VI, I would say, was the one that made the biggest impression on me. Right from the start, that dramatic opening score by Cliff Eidelman really does suggest that something special is coming. And then silence, just space. And then an explosion, the Klingon moon Praxis explodes. The Starship Excelsior is caught in the energy wave and that THX sound system had that cavernous auditorium shaking. Later on, when the Klingon judge is bashing his gavel and block, it really did fill the room and made that scene more real than reality. Yes, I had to learn more about this Lucasfilm THX sound standard. It took years before I had this full THX Ultra home system, but it has taken me close to the audio excellence of what we heard in the Empire on the 21st of February 1992. As for the film itself, I don't think you need to be a fully paid up Trekkie to enjoy this one. In fact, more than any other Star Trek film, I'd say this one is probably the best introduction because it has got a great murder mystery whodunit story. It's got great actors and actresses in every part. In fact, the villains are convincing and many of them have got distinctly Shakespearean English accents, but it's got some great humor too and some typical Star Trek camaraderie. I think it's simply a good film that anybody can enjoy. It runs for an hour and 50 minutes and it flies past. As far as I'm concerned, that's a good indication that you've just seen a good film. It had an estimated budget of $30 million and took 97 million at the worldwide box office. 
It was shot 35mm but had 70mm blow-up prints for premier theatres such as the Empire. Practical effects were shot VistaVision so that when the model shots were combined optically there would not be any image degradation to the rest of the film and it would stand up to scrutiny. So everything went into this film and quite right too because it was slated to be the last of the original cast Star Trek films. And I want to mention something about the ending without actually talking about the ending of the film but the end credits before they start and I think this is filmmaking genius. I can't remember seeing it ever before but each of the seven main cast members they sign their name across the screen and being a real Trekkie like myself, that made me feel quite emotional. It really did say to me that this was indeed the last Star Trek film. I didn't want to believe that. And we had a bit of a recurrence of the original cast in Star Trek Generations, Star Trek 7. But it wasn't quite the same. That was a Star Trek The Next Generation film. But I just think this was magic. A genius ending to a great film. This is the first time I've seen Star Trek VI in isolation since seeing it at the cinema because every time I've watched it at home it's either been on VHS in the six pack, the six movies all in one pack, or on the Blu-rays, which are very good actually. So I've never really seen it in isolation since I last saw it at the cinema and it was good to get back to that. It wasn't quite like seeing it for the first time, but it did impress on me how impressive the film is. Now, as far as I'm concerned, director Nicholas Mayer had rescued Star Trek when he took the helm for directing duties on Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan, and a lot of people have said the same thing because there was something not quite right with Star Trek The Motion Picture, as much as I enjoy it and I love the look of it. In fact, as the years go on, I seem to appreciate that film even more. But for this one, Star Trek VI, I think Nicholas Mayer has surpassed himself. I'm sure a lot of people out there are shaking their heads disagreeing with me. No, Star Trek II is the best. No, it's Star Trek IV. Maybe even a few, The Search for Spock. The Final Frontier I don't think has got many lovers, but I quite like it. But that one was doomed really from the outset because as soon as you're going out to find God, you know the ending's going to be a disappointment, however good it is. Apart from that, it's probably got the best humour of any Star Trek film, but they carried that on into Star Trek VI and they really had got the magic right and all the ingredients that made Star Trek so successful and so beloved as a television series is captured in Star Trek VI. So if you haven't already got the 4K, it might be worth taking a look. At the moment, the six film pack is £99 here in the UK, so it might be a little too expensive for many. The original release of the 1 to 4 4K pack is currently going for around £38 second hand in CEX, so there are some possibilities out there. However, others will tell me that the Star Trek The Motion Picture in the original 4 film pack has not got the various versions of it. I'm not sure quite that I'd want to see a longer or different cut of Star Trek The Motion Picture. And in that regard, I did not want to see the extended cut of Star Trek VI because I like the film so much, I didn't want to risk having it spoiled for me. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like and perhaps consider subscribing so I'll be encouraged to carry on creating content like this in the future. Until the next video, beam me up.